All right, so yeah, I'm using the mobile phone right now to uh, do this video for the um, Sunday with Spence and Gable Tannenberg um, game, just because I wanted to show, um, like I, I wanted to discuss the map and the counters, and I thought this would be a much quicker way of um, right now um, to show the whole map and whatnot. Well, I guess you also get to see the setup that I'll be using for um, when I do the after action reports and a bit of the playthrough. Uh, anyways, it was nice also when I get towards the counters, I'll, when I discuss that a bit, uh, Rob got to take a look at the counters and um, he thinks uh, he, he fi uh, has figured out um, how the Excalibur Games uh, people made their counters and he was like, God, it's really bad. Uh, he goes, the Russian ones aren't so bad, but the German ones are just horrible. I was like, yeah, I don't know what, uh, it's almost like a bit of a ghosting thing happened or something. I don't know. But anyways... I want to read the um, uh, one of the paragraphs from uh, the introduction uh, for this game before discussing the map and whatnot and the counters because that just uh, you know uh, for me anyways to put it back into uh, just to remind myself a little bit here. So it says um, this game is a brigade division level simulation of the first thirty days of the East Prussian campaign. The map covers the area over which the campaign was fought, and the playing pieces, henceforth called units, represent the military units which fought or could have fought in the battles. And each hex represents three miles from side to side, and each turn represents one day of actual time. Uh, all right, so there's um, 35 hexes um, left to right. So 35 times three, that's 105 miles. And there's 31 hexes up and down. So that's 93 miles. And uh, so there you go. I'll, take, I'll show you what's uh, like from the bottom left here. You've, you've got Thorn. There you can see the border. All the way up to Blaya Lostock or something. And then Pilvishki up over there. Yeah, and I'll be discussing later, uh, like, why I did, uh, like, where I put my setup and stuff. So I think if you remember, or maybe you don't, um, the second army has to be within, has to set up. Hold on. I have to grab the thing again. Uh, where's the initial setup? Where are you? There you are. Uh, yep. So it said the um, the second army must be deployed south of the above hex row, and uh, so for the first army it was this one. They have to be. Um, Says so the Russian player deploys uh, their units in two groups. Um, the first group is deployed on or north of the hex row. Uh, Augusto Augusto Vo Lick Allenstein. They may not be deployed on the border hexes. So here you go. This is this bit here. So they have to go. I said to nod up, uh, nod on uh, uh, one of the border hexes, and uh, for the Germans, if you remember, they can go anywhere in East Prussia as long as they don't also um, uh, put any of their units on a border hex. Now for the. Uh, the Russian Second Army, they must be deployed south of that hex row here. And may be deployed up to eight hexes. Okay, from Ostrolenka. So here. Um, must be deployed south of the above hex row. And on or adjacent, sorry, that was the cavalry units. Sorry, the cavalry units must be deployed in Russian territory and not on border hexes and can be uh, deployed up to eight hexes from this guy. However, the second army has to be, um, it says here, must be deployed south of the above hex row and on or adjacent to the following towns. Ostrolenka, Lomza, here. Okay, and Ossowizic over here. So that's a pretty constrained little area. 
But I think I've, uh, re um, in the previous video, was mentioning that um, I love putting the Russian cavalry out as much as I can uh, to try to kind of um, stall the Germans a little tiny bit. Anyways, now let's take a look uh, um, at the counters. Let's see how this video is. I think I've already butchered part of it, but oh well. Uh, so I think I mentioned before that um, there's nothing actually wrong. There's no uh, discrepancy with the Russian counters. Um, the Spence and Gable and the um, the Excalibur Games counters, they're the same. I don't see any differences. Um, yeah, and the, you'll see also maybe a slight um, quality difference in my German troops uh, to the Russian ones that I made, uh, just because I'm starting to clue in about using the different font, cleaning up some things. But still, I would, like those are still bitmap graphics. But anyways, let's go to the top one so like uh i don't if if you don't remember uh so the top um row is um the spence and gable ca uh, counters the middle row are mine and then the bottom row are the uh excalibur uh games ones and i think i can tell you how you can t uh know if you've got the spence and gable game uh besides just the map but uh or if you've got the excalibur games one because like I said, there was I didn't see any discrepancy um, in the Russians. They're all the same strength points, movement points, um, uh, naming, and all that stuff. So you're you're as far as I can see, uh, you're fine. Uh, it's the German. There's only two of them, and um, so if you look here, so the top one, uh, the Excalibur game is missing uh, the third reserve. Uh, German Infantry Division here, the 16-3. It's missing that. However, it compensated for it in a way. Uh, it does have a third reserve, but it's a 20 strength point unit. But if uh, the Spence and Gable one does not. Um, so I've, uh, I can, I've made enough counters. You can play both versions if you want. But uh, so, yeah, that was just, you know, maybe when they re were doing whatever. I mean, someone just didn't see the 16-3 and saw the whatever. This is the way it goes. Um, and then the second one is um, the Excalibur. Oh, sorry. Let's go to the what they are missing. So the um, the original, the Spence and Gable, has the second Landwehr Brigade as a 5-3. So I've done mine. And then you can zip on over here. And you can see, well, you can see that the Excalibur Games one is missing it. And then um, they've got a 6-3. Which makes sense. I mean, why did, you know what I mean? Like, why did Spencer Gable have only one? But for whatever reason, they wanted to have that. Like I said, they went into their hist historical city and, and whatnot to try to make everything uh, that way. So if that's, you know, or maybe they, made, it doesn't matter. It's, that's the way the game was made. So, you know, that's what I'm saying. So there we go. Um yeah, the Excalibur game. So you can do both if you want. Um, yeah, it's, I just, like I said, I made my counters because I just was, and they're so thin. Both of them are just so thin. They're really difficult for me to to manipulate. And they were hard to read. The The worst ones I find are the the German um, Excalibur games ones. Uh, they just, it's like bleeding issues or something. Like, you know, it looks like the ink just bleeds in or, and it's just not fun for me. But um I mean, they're, they're usable, and if I, like I said, if I got this game and whatever, or if it's the only game I had, I'd still be playing it, uh, that's for bloody sure, because, uh, well, you'll, as you'll see, I or, or hope you'll see, uh, this is a pretty fine game, especially for three pages, it still blows me away that um, you can have such a good game in such a small package, it's, uh, yeah, it's inspiring as far as I'm concerned, it's like, wow, I'm not saying I could do it or whatever, but you're like, hmm. It's manageable or something. You don't have to like create a big beast of a game to uh, have a, an enjoyable one. So that's it. Hopefully the next one will be my setup and, and so on and so forth.